Hello everyone, my name is Eli Elias. Uh, I'm a lecturer and a historian at USEC University, the Holy Spirit University of Kaslik in Jounier, uh, Lebanon. Uh, I'm honored to um, uh, prepare to you this video presenting uh, why keeping uh, archives and records, uh, uh, family records in the Middle East uh, uh, is a way to protect uh, the identity. So in order to understand uh, the importance uh, uh, of preserving the identity, uh, I will be explaining to you uh, uh, briefly the evolution of uh, the history uh, in the Middle East, uh, starting the seventh century till uh, 1920. So let me uh, share with you uh, a PowerPoint I prepared for uh, this purpose. So, uh, there you go, okay. Uh, so why the Middle East is so complicated? Uh, technically, uh, answering this question is a little bit uh, difficult, but I will uh, try uh, my best. Uh, starting, uh, uh, yeah, and I will not go back to the ancient history. Uh, I will start by the medieval history. Uh, technically, in the year 632, uh, uh, one year, two years before the Islamic uh, conquest of the region. As you can see, in the 7th century, uh, the region was divided into three political entities. Uh, the first one in yellow presenting the Byzantine Empire. It was a Christian empire. Uh, the official language uh, was a Greek Orthodox, but beside this uh, official language, we had three other local languages spoken by three different local churches. The first one, the Armenian church. Then the south, you have the Syriac uh, church. And of course, in Egypt, you have the Coptic church. So these four churches, they reflected four different communities, it means four different, different cultures. Uh, uh, so uh, moving to the right, uh, in the purple color, you have the Persian Empire. The official language was the Persian language, uh, uh, more specifically the Pahlawi. Uh, in addition to Syriac in, uh, in Iraq today, and of course the Hebrew, uh, in Iraq. Uh, the main religion or the official religion was Zoroastrianism, the Zoroastrian uh, uh, religion. Of course, you have also the Hebrew religion and the Christian uh, religion. Moving to the south, to the green uh, regions, you have the newly funded uh, Islamic State. It was, of course, funded by the Prophet um, Muhammad. Its capital was Al Madina uh, Al Munawwara. And all this, you know, this political map will change only in 12 years. So moving to the year 644, the newly created state will conquer uh, the Persian Empire and it will conquer a great part of the Byzantine Empire. Uh, the first caliphs will be known as the Rashidun uh, caliphs. Uh, they will keep their capital in Medina, but they will try to force the non-Muslims to uh, convert to the Islamic religion. Uh, many uh, uh, Christians, they decided to uh, uh, hide in the mountains, hide in the valleys, so they can keep their uh, culture and to keep their identity. Uh, of course, these Christians or uh, these minorities, they will not have the chance to secure all their archives and uh, documents, maybe they will manage to preserve a few uh, or a little percentage from their uh, archives. But moving to the uh, 750, uh, a new caliphate, a new fa ruling family will uh, replace the Umayyads uh, who replaced the uh, Rashidun. Uh, the Abbasid Caliphate will move its capital to Baghdad and there they will exercise a very strong centralized uh, governance. Uh, of course, the uh, uh, oppression and uh, uh, the conversion to the Islamic religion continues. 
uh, but this is like was normal uh, uh, during that uh, era, during the Middle Ages. Uh, in the 11th century, uh, the centralized government, Islamic centralized government, will, uh, will fail. It will be uh, decentralized. Uh, its power will be distributed to different small uh, Islamic uh, uh, realms and the different regions. But we will witness in that century the coming of the Seljuks. Uh, they were known by the father of the Turks. The Seljukites will, uh, of course, control a big part of the Middle East, and they will uh, manage to uh, reach uh, uh, Istanbul, uh, the capital of the Byzantine uh, Empire. In Egypt, you have a green uh, uh, color representing uh, the first Shia Caliphate at that time, the Fatimid uh, Caliphate. Of course, uh, the, the Middle East will witness a, a holy war uh, between the Crusaders uh, who were a uh, European army defending the holy lands, uh, of course, in order to defend and protect the minorities uh, in the Middle East. Uh, unfortunately, the Crusaders will not uh, stay for a very long time. They will leave after 200 years of their uh, existence. They will be chased by the Ayyubids, which is an, another Islamic Sunni Caliphate who will control uh, a big part of the eastern, uh, Middle Eastern part. Uh, the famous Salahuddin Ayyubi, he will be the founder of this Ayyubid Caliphate. So as you can see, uh, the average of uh, existence for every empire is almost uh, 100 to 150 years. So uh, the different communities or uh, uh, groups uh, uh, who decided to stay in this region, they were under uh, a permanent attack from different uh, empires or from different political leaders. Until uh, 1517, which is uh, the 16th century, where the Ottomans, they will uh, conquer the, uh, a big part of the region, even they will reach the North African countries till Morocco. The Ottoman Empire or the Ottomans, they were Turks, they were not Arabs. Uh, they will exercise a very strong administrative, uh, centralized administrative uh, uh, system where they will uh, give a small march for the different minorities to uh, exercise their, uh, uh, practice their identity, their uh, culture uh, in return of paying taxes. It was like a, 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 a modified uh, system, our administrative system exercised by the Ottomans. This empire will last for more than 400 years. And during these centuries and during these 400 years, uh, the minorities, they managed to uh, take some uh, privilege uh, under the Ottoman rules. Uh, a new system of protecting uh, or actually representing the minorities will be known as the Milli system. And here, maybe uh, we can say in history that it was uh, the first step for these minorities to claim their rights to rule themselves. Uh, of course, I'm talking about the minorities who managed to survive uh, during uh, the last 1000 years. Uh, the Ottomans actually, after exercising uh, uh, a full 400 years, they will lose uh, the war during the Great War in, uh, in 1914 to 1918. Uh, and of course, we have the colonial powers who will replace uh, the Ottomans in the Middle East. And this is how the French and the British, they uh, uh, mandated uh, different parts from the Middle East and they created uh, what we know today by the Arab countries. Yani, the French mandate authorities, they declared uh, the Lebanese state in 1920. They declared four Syrian states in Syria today. Uh, uh, the British uh, uh, forces, uh, they created Palestine. They created the Jordanian kingdom. Uh, they protected uh, the British, uh, sorry, the Egyptian uh, uh, kingdom at that time. 
Uh, also, they created Iraq, today Iraq. Uh, as for uh, the other Gulf states, uh, they uh, helped their allies to uh, reach the power and unite the different regions of uh, the Al Jazeera uh, or the Arabian Peninsula. And this is how the different Arab states, most of the Arab states were created in 1920. So uh, looking back to the history, uh, we can clearly uh, say that uh, the Middle East is a region, uh, uh, it's a, a diverse region when you have a lot of minorities sharing territories with uh, uh, dominant groups, which is Islam. So if we look at the map of uh, uh, the religions uh, of the Middle East, you can see that we have, uh, we don't have like a one single country where we uh, don't cross uh, or where there's no minority there. So, uh, of course, if you uh, look at the eastern uh, or western coast of the Middle Ages, uh, sorry, uh, the Middle East, you can see that most of the minorities that we know uh, today, they live here. Uh, the simple reason is because this region is a mountainous region. Uh, it was considered uh, as a fortress for these minorities who decided to hide and protect their identity from the uh, conquerors. So this is like quickly, we uh, uh, as uh, me being part of one of the minorities, uh, Christian minorities uh, in Lebanon, which is the Maronite uh, community, uh, we think that saving uh, our archives and saving our documents is part uh, uh, or it's an essential part uh, for saving our identity, because uh, uh, protecting uh, the documents, protecting uh, uh, the archive centers, uh, protecting uh, uh, the holy books, the church books, protecting um, even the letters, the correspondence written by our fathers, is like uh, protecting our heritage. We are trying to link uh, the past to the present by uh, preserving uh, the archives, by uh, preserving the records of our families. And this is how we uh, uh, maintain our presence in this very difficult uh, uh, regions. So many archive centers, they were funded during the last 10 years. Uh, uh, hard work took place. A lot of documents were uh, uh, collected and these documents were digitized uh, in order to be indexed and then to try to connect to our uh, uh, people or our group all around the world. Uh, we succeeded in uh, uh, tracking uh, the immigrants who left uh, Lebanon from the 19th century and we are trying to get in touch with uh, their ancestors. Uh, and this way we are trying to uh, reach them and to tell them exactly about their uh, beautiful history and in order to preserve uh, this unique identity that we have as Maronite Christians in the Middle East. Thank you for taking the time to listen to me. Uh, of course, I'm available uh, for any uh, question uh, by email, and I hope next time we meet like uh, face to face. Thank you.